Hey, welcome to your core breathing video. I know it's been a lot of video watching, but it's day one. You won't have to watch this ever again if you've got it down. But you can always come back to this video if you need a little refresher, and it really is super important for you guys to understand how to support your body while you're working out so that we avoid injury and we're just working in the correct way. And form is key when you're doing all of these things. So I really wanna make sure that since I'm not gonna be in the room with you while you're working out, that you're really working um, and you're using proper function so that we can avoid injury and that you can make, get the results that you really want, right? Okay core breathing. This is the basis for all exercise. As you know, I'm a prenatal postpartum specialist and a lot of you that are taking this program have just had a baby. Not everyone, but a lot of you have. And if you have your inner core unit, your core muscles have been, you know, severely compromised. Uh, whether it was a year ago, whether it was six months ago, whether it was six years ago, 60 years ago, once you've had a baby, you are always postpartum. Um, and I work with women and men of all different ages and abilities, and it's the same constant that I see every time. And this is why I feel that this is so important um, to kind of get out before you even start. We wanna go over what is your core, right? It is four muscles generally. Um, not generally, it is four muscles, and it's the inner core unit that su provides support and structure for your entire body. It starts with your diaphragm, which is the primary breathing muscle underneath your ribs. Your, your diaphragm is connected to your transverse abdominis. That's your deep abdominal muscle. It's not the one that you can touch. This is your rectus abdominis. It's the one that's kind of like a corset underneath. You actually have four different abdominal muscles. You have your rectus abdominis, you have your transverse abdominis, and you, you have your inner and outer obliques. The transverse abdominis is the one that we really wanna focus on. Your transverse abdominis is connected to your pelvic floor. It's that diamond sling of muscles that's connected from your pubic bone all the way to your tailbone in the back, and it connects on, uh, to your sit bones on either side. Your pelvic floor is super important. Um, if you've had a baby vaginally, it pushed your baby out. It's involved in sexual function. Um, it holds all your internal organs up and many other functions. We don't have time to go through every one of them, but it's super important. Uh, it's connected to your deep back muscle, which is your multifidi, runs up the deep spine here. So these four muscles, they create this inner core unit, like an inner core box, that's why I keep saying unit, and they function together, right? There's an intra-abdominal pressure that happens. So when you breathe, your diaphragm goes down, your transverse abdominis goes out, your pelvic floor will descend, and everything will kind of work together. We now know through the, through clinical trials that they contract together and they relax together, right? And if one is compromised or not working or functioning properly, there is a good indication that none of them are really working, you know, the way that they should, right? If you think about a balloon, if you press on the balloon, one side, the other side, just kind of goes right out and there's no sort of management of pressure at all. We want to make sure that all the sides of the core are strong and functioning so that we can provide support to the rest of the body. We know that there's an anticipatory contraction that happens when you move your arm, when you move your leg. That's not your leg. When you move your leg. Uh, so we just want to kind of build on what's already happening. We want to make sure we're able to contract those muscles properly um, and then relax them as well. A lot of people think when you strengthen your pelvic floor, it's Kegel, 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 and that's not necessarily the case. If you have an overactive pelvic floor and you're always tightening, tightening, you may actually have to work on the relaxation part as well. When we have complete engage and complete relaxation, that's when we have proper function. Um, in my other video, I suggested before you start any workout program, you should go to get checked by a pelvic floor physio. They'll be able to do an internal exam and really tell you what's going on with those muscles. Um, for the sake today, I just wanna go over how to engage your core properly through breath, and that's kind of the basis of how I want you to breathe throughout this entire workout program. So we want proper function, we want engage, and we want relax. So as you inhale, your diaphragm will go down, your transverse abdominis will go out, your pelvic floor will relax and descend, and as you exhale, your pelvic floor will lift up and contract, your transverse abdominis will pull in. It won't suck in, it won't grip, it won't, you can't, you don't wanna hold your breath. It's different than sucking your navel to your spine. It's this feeling of an engaged corset coming in and protecting and supporting, and then your diaphragm will go up. So many people use different imagery, 
inside to kind of get this proper core breathing. I'm gonna turn to my side so I can show you a little bit. And I usually tell my clients to practice this about five minutes a day because if you're not used to doing it, it's very actually hard to get the hang of it, especially when you're doing it with squats and lunges and things like that. So if you want to, you can do it with me. You can put your hands on your belly and you can inhale and your belly will go out. And as you exhale, everything will engage. And exhale. Now you obviously can't see my pelvic floor, but I'm relaxing and contracting. So to have an engaged core, it's not about sucking in so your stomach looks fat. It's about those muscles going in and out and supporting each movement. So if you're lifting a bunch of weight over your head, you're and now I have strength here and I've supported the lift over my head. If you're doing a deadlift in your program, you're gonna inhale and as you exhale, everything's gonna engage and then you're gonna lift, extend your legs and lift that deadlift, right? Or lift the weight up off the ground. It's the same thing that you would do when you're lifting your you know, 40 pound four-year-old, me, up into the car. Uh, let's prepare you for life. So it's not just about the 30 minutes you're gonna do with me in the gym, uh, but it's about supporting your life and being able to breathe and engage your diaphragm, engage your transverse abdominis while you're working is essential for proper function. And I know that's a lot of information. I want you to practice this. I want you to watch this video. I have another video that explains how to put your core breathing through movement. I'm gonna attach it as well. If you have any questions, I go into this a lot on my Instagram, but it really is essential. Practice makes perfect. Just make sure that you're not holding your breath through your workouts, that you're not breathing in your chest. Just be aware of what's happening in your body when you first start out and it will get better. The more you practice, the more you think about it, the more, the, the more better better you will get. And I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I held my breath on those two reps. I got to start over again. And it's okay. We just want to be working as much as we can with proper function so that we don't kind of increase these muscle patterns that, that cause pain, that cause weakness, that cause injury. I hope that made sense. I hope that was helpful. Please think about your core breathing as you're going into your workouts. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You guys are gonna kill it.